Every October, we recognize Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And while it can begin to feel routine, it's important to take a step back and really look at the progress that has been made year after year. I'm Beth Badalino, CEO of Healthy Women, and I am joined here today with Nancy Brinker, founder of the Susan G. Komen Foundation, and Dr. DeCarla Albright, a leading OBGYN, to talk about some of the exciting developments from the past year and how they impact your breast health this Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Nancy, you founded one of the largest not-for-profits in the country dedicated to fighting breast cancer. What have you been focusing on this year? Well, I'm a breast cancer survivor, so I'm speaking from my own personal experience. And one, one area that's always been very important to me, in addition to funding research and clinical care, dealing with disparities in communities, et cetera, is, is supporting screening, breast screening. When it comes to breast cancer screening, we all know to get mammograms, but there's a lot of confusion around who should be getting them and when to start. Yes, I get this question all the time, and it's confusing because there are numerous guidelines out there that are conflicting that patients are looking to follow. So what I recommend to my friends, my family, and definitely my patients is to initiate screening at age 40 annually. Following ACOG, the American Congress of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, they've developed a shared decision-making model. And with that, we discuss with the patient annual screening and offering it at age 40, but also talking about their family history and any personal concerns they may, they may have that may impact the initiation of screening. And to add to the confusion, there are also different types of mammograms now, is that correct? That's correct. So there are conventional mammograms or 2D mammograms, and then there's digital breast tomosynthesis, which you may have heard referred to as a 3D mammogram or a 3D mammography exam. The tomosynthesis is able to look at the breast layer by layer so that it can make it a lot easier for the radiologist to see lesions in the breast or concerning calcifications. But not all tomosynthesis is the same. As a clinician, I've worked a lot with my radiologist and also read a lot of the studies to ensure that I'm giving the patients, my patients, my best recommendation. And the Genius 3D mammography system it has been backed by over 200 clinical studies and proven to be the most accurate mammogram technology for women of all breast densities as compared to 2D mammography alone. So I'm raising my hand here because I'm one of those patients that continually got called back for false po having a false positive exam, breast mammogram. So this year, I had the Genius 3D mammogram, and it was the first year in probably five that I did not have to get called back. And it was huge because I am a working mom. And so scheduling that first mammogram is a hurdle, huge hurdle. Trying to do a follow-up, that's one that I tend to put off. And so I have to say I was thrilled with the results of because I tested negative, so I was very happy, but I was really happy that I didn't have to make another appointment. And, and avoided potentially having uh, more procedures. I, I had to have many, stress. many procedures when and I was stress. young because screening was not this clear. It was, there was no genius 3D technology. And so it was really important to be able to not have to have more and more procedures. So Dr. Albright, I want to come back to one point you mentioned, breast density, because it's so confusing. I'm hearing a lot about it. We're seeing so much in the press. Can you talk to me a little bit about breast density and what that is? Absolutely. So first, breasts are made up of fibrous, glandular, and fatty tissue. And that's pretty much what creates the density. Women who have higher dense breasts have more fibrous and glandular tissue within their breasts. That can make it more difficult for a radiologist to see a lesion or a cancer when they have their mammogram uh, during their screening. Actually, nearly 50% of women ages 40 to 74 have higher breast density. So knowing the density is significantly important. That's why I recommend that all my patients have a Genius 3D mammogram, uh, regardless of density, because it's the only mammogram that's been FDA approved, and it's superior for women with dense breasts compared to 2D alone. 
Breast density can be confusing, and for physicians and those of us who talk about breast cancer day in and day out, breast density has always been on our radar. But just recently, it's become more top of mind. More than 30 states have uh, or require uh, that letters be sent notifying women of their level of breast density. And it's great we're bringing this issue into the conversation to help educate women, because um, the letters can be confusing. And, uh, you know, so what, or what am I supposed to do? And it leaves the women with a lot of outstanding questions. Let's talk about compressions. I've heard from a lot of friends and people, you know, that I've worked with in the hospital that they tend to put off their mammograms because it can be painful. That's absolutely correct. And what I like to tell patients is to maybe change their perspective a little bit. Proper positioning and compression, it's critical for the radiologist to get the most optimal image of the breast. If the radiologist does not have that, then they're at risk of getting called back and they're at risk of being re-imaged with additional radiation exposure. So Dr. Albright, I hear all too often that women aren't getting their mammograms because of fear of the discomfort, which is often associated with compression. That is correct. And so one thing that I'm really excited about is that the makers of the Genius 3D mammogram have come out with a newer technology. It's called the Smart Curve Breast Stabilization System. And with this technology, it's a different mammogram plate that's curved at the chest wall and contoured uh, like the shape of the breast. So when the breast is placed on that plate, it actually reduces discomfort from compression. So this will allow the patient to comply a little better and perceive less discomfort with the mammogram because it's going to reduce pinching and, and the pain that patients feel like they've experienced. I believe when they studied it, about 93% of patients felt like the smart curve system had reduced pain and was found to be more comfortable. So hopefully with doing this, uh, using this system, we'll get more women to comply with screening. And, and the pain part, the, salt, the slight amount of pain is, was one feature that was making women uncomfortable, just generally, mammography over the years. Or putting and, it off, right? Yes, yeah. or, and, and, putting, or, and making them put it off. And frankly, uh, when, you, when you mitigate those circumstances, when you make it you know, much more comfortable, and the outcome is so good, that's really the only thing I as a patient am concerned about. I don't care whatever bells or whistles are offered with any kind of screening. These are the two features, and particularly the accuracy. We need to take it upon ourselves and really be advocates for our health. That's really what Healthy Women is all about. And I am so happy you both could be here today to help educate women so they can feel empowered to make informed choices about their health this Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Thank you, Beth. Thank you, great. Beth.